come together to talk about groundwater. We're here at IIT Mumbai. Uh, had a presentation today where we were discussing the importance of groundwater and natural springs to people in the Western Ghats of Maharashtra. Uh, it's a really unique geology in this area that uh, we have this these old uh, lava flows that flowed horizontally and, and have formed these sort of layer cake mountains in this area of the Deccan Plateau, this part of the Western Ghats. And it's a, it's a really unique situation. Um, not a lot of water stays in the ground. Most villages uh, in the mountains struggle to get enough water throughout the year. Um, often comes down to rationing water in the dry season, um, just maybe a, a couple dozen liters per household per day. So it's a very uh, dire situation for a lot of communities. So one of the things that we've been working on is trying to protect uh, and, and capture water from natural springs. Um, how this works is during the monsoon rain, some of the water will enter uh, these basalt lava flows. And uh, some of the layers are more porous than others. And what you have uh, these very impervious hard rock layers that the water will slowly percolate down to hit these hard rock layers and move laterally and come out on the sides of mountains as natural springs. So you've got this natural system to set up to, that actually brings groundwater to the surface in many places and has been used by communities for generations, but uh, uh, degradation of the ecosystem through uh, demand for resources from grazing of animals, uh, anthropogenic fire, agricultural burning, um, tree cutting for fuel wood, construction, development, new uh, bore wells and open wells, all of these things are actually destroying the springs and we see this on a daily basis. Um, so the ecological degradation, uh, communities are losing these springs that they've depended on for such a long time. Some of these communities, it's the only source of drinking water. Um, bore wells, open wells, are all go dry during the dry season. Um, pumping from dams can be cost prohibitive, uh, especially if they're high up on the mountains. So maintaining these springs is really important for a lot of communities, and, and a lot of villages are now uh, doing this on their own, struggling and looking for ways that they can protect and restore these ecosystems because they're realizing it's really the, the only source of drinking water that they have. Um, a lot of the temples that you see um, were built on uh, old springs originally, and now with groundwater dropping, the water is no longer flowing through the temples, and these old temples are now Actually, they're building a lot of new temples uh, because the old ones are not flowing with water anymore. Uh, and of course, the new temples uh, aren't built on springs, so it's, it's really um, it's a bad situation that's happening. We've been working with communities, uh, looking at how groundwater flows through these areas. We're not consultants. Um, we don't do any. We're not contractors. We basically uh, work with communities that are looking to do this type of thing. They've already come together. Um, they're interested in improving their water situation, so we don't. Uh, have to do so much with community mobilization. And we basically explain how the groundwater works, help them map it um, so that they can understand the ecosystem itself. And then we lead the process of them uh, deciding what should be done. In most cases, it's reforesting or protecting the spring shed where groundwater is getting in and feeding the springs. Um, and we help with some technical details, such as building spring boxes. And these are things, very simple brick lined box that you build um, at the, uh, where, the, where the spring is formed. Um, small in size, five feet long and a couple of feet high, and uh, essentially it protects the spring, prevents contamination of the water, and captures that water, uh, which can then be fed, gravity fed to villages uh, for drinking water. Um, and it's a really simple design, it's been around for a long time, and we've made just some small improvements on it, but it's something that really anybody can do, and it's very uh, cost effective. So we've been working on this project for about the last three years, worked with uh, maybe a dozen communities or so, and uh, now it's starting to take off where um, uh, people from the villages that we first worked with are now a part of this project and are actually explaining to other communities about groundwater and educating um, about groundwater, because there's a lot of misconception out there. So it's, it's really nice that it's come full circle and we can eventually step out of the project because there's this knowledge base growing, uh, what we call para-hydrogeologists. Um, 
this group of folks who, um, from villages who now know a lot about groundwater, having experienced this and worked with other communities. And a lot of communities are coming together. We don't, uh, in this project, we actually don't fund uh, very much of these. We might give uh, 20, 30,000 rupees towards projects, but really communities are self-funding this through Shramadan, through uh, providing sand and bricks and their own labor. And a lot of times they're collecting money among their households to uh, build these really simple spring shed structures uh, to harvest this water and doing it really from the grassroots level independent of everybody else and it's, it's an amazing thing to see. Come and visit.